I'm Stephen Rintut. I'm a president of Coherent Digital. We're a pretty new outfit. Um, our mission is to tame wild content. By wild content, we mean all that stuff that's um, on the internet that's got scholarly or uh, learning value. Just a really wide range of content that isn't books and journals. Social learning and research, I think, is really, really important. Um, the internet demands it. The internet has a lot of promise, but only if we can actually leverage tools like social interactions. So when I look, you know, at, say, Policy Commons, um, this is a, a database of more than 20,000, sorry, <laughs> two and a half million items. And how are we actually going to make these useful? How are we going to add things like annotations? There's no way we can do that one by one. We have to do it collaboratively. And in making things collaborative, we're actually going to be able to do it far cheaper, far faster, far more efficiently. So I, I'm excited about uh, coalitions like this that uh, are really going to make that possible. So when we take a look at what content's actually out there, we've identified over 20,000 organizations that put out really quality reports. So how actually are we going to make those reports useful? Very often think tanks are putting out reports in HTML with minimal metadata, um, publication dates, author, t um, uh, author attribution, um, uh, uh, indexing, cataloging. It's all absent. So when I look at what tools are available out there to help that, if I take annotations, for example, we're talking really important topics around which a lot of discourse deserves to happen. And whether that's around research or learning, the question is, how can we collectively do this? For a company like Coherent to invest um, in each of these features independently, there's no way as a startup we can afford it. But if, say, Hypothesis has developed an annotation tool that really delivers, why not free these annotations, which historically have been trapped by being attached to a single article on a single website behind a paywall on, a, on, in, on, on something that cannot be uh, uh, easily found? Why don't we open it up and make that material generally available to all? And we don't necessarily need to get rid of the material being behind a paywall if for publishing reasons that's really important, but we can use the same tools. Well, if I take annotations, for example, it would be great to have these, these seminal policy documents uh, annotatable in a coherent way. Um, excuse the pun. Um, yeah, it would be really, really great if um, instead of us developing an idiosyncratic uh, version of uh, annotations, I've talked a lot about annotations, but it applies across the board. Let's take geotagging, for example. Um, geotagging, uh, there are many tools already extant out there, but most of them are idiosyncratic and only work with dedicated data sets. What if there was a geotagging tool that was actually um, applicable across broad ranges of content? Perhaps it exists and we just don't know about it. So by coming together, I think we're in a position where we can really, really benefit mutually. And, you know, from, from a competitive standpoint, it doesn't obviate the need for competition. There's plenty of places we can compete, but why not collaborate on some too? and get the benefits. I think I've mentioned this before. There's a vanity sometimes that comes from being in a startup that you can do it all yourself. And then as you get into the thick of it, you suddenly realize that there's just so much work to do. Um, when I look at the challenges of wild content, making um, things like Twitter or YouTube usable or more usable in an academic setting or a learning setting or a research, research setting. There are just so many different challenges we have to face. Trying to do it one by one, the chances you're going to succeed are pretty low. We don't know what the work that's actually being done 
um, let alone it being done in a coherent way. Um, so for all of these reasons, if you're interested in leveraging social uh, spaces, if you're interested in actually following what I think the web demands, the web is an inherently social media. It didn't just take Facebook and TikTok, etc., to show this. It is the very nature of the medium that it connects people from one to another. And if you turn your back on that, you're not only increasing your cost base, making it harder to market, etc., but you're at very high risk that you'll be penalized.